All right, guys, so the 2009 Nissan Murano broke down. It's on the trailer. It's been on the trailer for about three, four days. We think the thermostat has gone cuckoo. Uh, the car started to overheat, kept overheating. They tried limping at home. Finally, I just went and picked it up on the trailer and let the guys go home from their day of work. So this is our tech car. That's how we refer to it. It's our work vehicle. Um, the guys go out every day and do wireless internet installs with this car, so it gets a lot of miles put on it. I bought it at 188 something thousand miles. It's now at 193. So we drove it for quite a while in the past uh, like month and a half, and uh, it's been really great. But the thermostat we think is going wonky, so I got a new one. I'm going to take it over to the storage unit right now with the uh, Duramax, and we're going to work on it get that thermostat out, put a new one in, and see if that fixes our issue on the ultra-reliable 3.5 liter Nissan V6. Murano has these really cool like tow hooks under here, which is super awesome. Now, uh, they would be great on like a Porsche or something that uh, actually breaks down, so when you put it on the trailer, you can do what we did here. Now, these are super reliable cars, so they hardly ever break down, but it's nice to have the tow hooks. All right, so we got the Murano unhooked. Uh, I'm gonna be driving it off all by myself, so. I'm gonna show you guys a really cool shot of this, getting it off the trailer if I wasn't alone. I don't know if it was gonna start. Started, does not sound good. Okay, brakes on, parking brake is off. I'm gonna let it idle down before I try taking it off. In reverse. All-wheel drive lock on. We're going down trailer, trying to do it slow just in case I fall off one of the ramps. Ooh, tip point. That's terrifying. Now we are off the trailer. Cool. We're in the unit here. Let me close this down so we don't let out all the heat, huh? So I'm in an indisclosed location to begin working on the Murano. I'm not actually gonna do the whole repair right now, and I'm probably not gonna do the whole repair on video because uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. And this isn't a video tutorial, but it's gonna be kind of a vlog of me working through it and going through it. So if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel below. I do have actual repair videos on the channel as well, so jump back check them out. Uh, it's uh, not that I don't want to do a repair video, it's that uh, I really have to get this done quick and actually doing a complete video or a tutorial on this takes an awful lot of time to actually film and put out for you guys. So unfortunately I don't have time to do uh, a repair video or a tutorial right now on this car. Um, these are ultra reliable motors. There is a lot of repair content out there. A very good motor, very good car. Um, they don't typically break down, so this is kind of a first and kind of an interesting thing. But uh, we'll get this thermostat swapped out and get it back on the road so we can go keep working. Kind of dove into the repair. Um, I took the hood off just so it's not here, you know, hanging over your head as you're working constantly. So I'll show you here. This is the thermostat here. It's built into the housing, so this whole housing comes off. There's a few bolts back in there. Uh, I did pull out the expansion tank that I've conveniently thrown in the trash for the moment for the time being. Um, I'm gonna have to get in here and figure out how we get that housing out that thermostat. You do have to undo that hose. I'm just being careful because I don't want to let a ton of coolant go. Uh, I only have a little bit of cardboard under the car right now protecting it. Um, well I got some bad news and I got some good news. Good news is that I caught some problems before uh, they got any worse, and uh, bad news is I dug quite a bit deeper into the Murano than I uh, was hoping to do with the thermostat, and I haven't touched the thermostat at all. And it's seven, and I've been here for like two and a half hours, so... Let me show you guys what we got going on. So yes, I did pull the intake off of the car. I also pulled the coil packs and the spark plugs, and uh, they are not in very good condition. I'll show you that here in another clip. And these back two have a lot of oil on them. These front three have a little bit, but those back two are drenched in oil. So unfortunately, 
we're gonna need new valve cover gaskets for this car. So front and back. This thing's a huge pain to get the intake off, so I'm just gonna do valve cover gaskets and all new spark plugs and a new intake manifold gasket while we're in here. Get everything put back together, swap out that thermostat, and then we should be good to go back on the road. But holy fright, this car is <laughs> and has been so much more work than I initially thought we would be doing coming in to replace that uh, thermostat down there. Instead, well, we're replacing a whole bunch of other stuff. It has 193,000 miles, so I mean, it's kind of to be expected. You can see the battery's not even in the best of condition right now, so uh, just kind of going through, cleaning stuff up, getting stuff replaced, and uh, doing kind of a more major service on the car while I have it here in uh, the shop, so. Yep, that's the hood to my 2009 Nissan Murano. Now, I did an update video a few weeks ago, and uh, this is the first time that I introduced the car to you, or at least it was in this state in the update video, the first time that you ever saw it. And you're probably wondering, um, you know, what is going on with the 2009 Nissan Murano? What happens with it? Um, because I pre-recorded a lot of the videos in the series that's been on the channel lately. If uh, you want to see more content on this, if you want to see content on my previous series on the O2 Duramax, hit the big red button below because you don't want to miss out on this content. To be completely honest, the car is still sitting here uh, with the hood off and with the engine completely, or at least the intake and all that completely tore off because I'm waiting on parts. Now, O'Reilly's wanted to charge me over $1,200 for uh, the parts for this car to do the repair. Now, of course, I went out, did my own research, found the best price, and ordered those same exact parts online for over $1,000 less. I do need the car back out on the road for work and to make money, but it uh, actually saves me more money to just let it sit here for another week while I wait for those parts thus giving me time to actually film a video for you guys. But because I've already tore everything down, this isn't going to be a repair video. I'm just going to briefly kind of show you what I've got going on, what we've had to do, and I will link a ton of repair videos down below in case your Murano decides to do the same thing. Here is the engine bay in my 09 Murano. Now this is just the Nissan 3.5 liter V6. It's set up in a transverse um, system here. This car is all wheel drive, but it is kind of weird how they have the engine set up. So usually here there's an intake on top of it. You've got your air box and your air cleaner and your silencer and stuff all right here. And then you have your coolant reservoir all right there. Right now I have all of that pulled off the car. So I have, you know, the silencer box, the engine cover, air box right here. And uh, I think the coolant reservoir is over there or something. Have all of that torn out of the car. I've been doing a little bit of cleaning because it did look like that this car had sat for quite a while at some point in its life from the previous owner. I don't know, maybe it's broken down and uh, it sat for months apparently. So I cleaned a lot of the garbage and gunk and crap out of it. I cleaned the air filter up. And uh, those are just kind of, you know, little maintenance things that need done. But um, what actually happened or broke down with this car, at least we think, was the thermostat. So Nissan has this weird, like, built into the housing thermostat. But um, this car started overheating on the highway and it uh, would, you know, it, the heat would climb up, it'd fall back down, climb up, fall back down. So because of the symptoms with the car, we do think it was the thermostat, which we are replacing. That's the main repair that I'm doing in here. I picked one up from O'Reilly's for $30. And as you can see, there are only three bolts, right? But it's actually a super hard repair. So you have to remove like all of this stuff here just to access the bolts on the thermostat and the housing. You cannot see any of the bolts at all when you're taking this apart. And it's really hard to get this thermostat out of here. And I imagine even more difficult to put it back in which uh, I have not done yet. I actually have the new one sitting right here in the gasket. So it's gonna be kind of a tricky <laughs> repair to get uh, that thermostat back down in there if you can't see it. Um, but while I was doing the thermostat, I had to wait on a lower radiator hose that I'm also replacing. So because of that, I decided to pull the spark plugs on the motor just to see what condition they're in. Now, I was gonna show you those spark plugs, but apparently I threw them away. So they had oil on them, which is not what you want to see. 
and they also had rust and corrosion around the porcelain. I'll throw a quick picture of them up right now. Whenever you see a spark plug with oil on it or rust and corrosion, and of course the tip was completely burnt off, they need replaced. Um, that was not good news because of the way this engine is set up. You have to pull the intake completely off to get to the spark plugs in the back of the motor, which uh, really, you know, is a large undertaking. It's just a lot of nuts and bolts. It's a lot of things that have to come off. And uh, because you can't really access the back side of it, it's a lot of painstaking, um, just patience trying work. It's not super hard or difficult. It's just, uh, like I said, really trying to the patient. So I pulled that intake off. I pulled the coil packs in the back. We got the back plugs out and the back plugs didn't just have a little bit of oil on them, but they were soaked in oil. If your spark plugs ever get oil on them on the threads or up above the threads, you need to replace your valve cover gaskets as well. And uh, because this is a newer car and it's uh, made by engineers, that means I have to replace the valve covers as well because the uh, gaskets that go around the spark plugs um, are built into the valve cover. So the uh, valve cover gaskets are like 13 bucks, but the valve cover and the gaskets are like $70. Unless you're getting them from O'Reilly's, it's like over 600. So I, uh, I ordered new valve covers, spark plugs, coils, and of course the thermostat radiator hose and just a ton of stuff for this car. So that's what I'm doing and that's why it's taking so long because it's not just your normal V6 or your V8. You have to pull off like everything on the top of the motor just to be able to access the back side of that motor and everything on the side. You even have to remove the engine mount and raise the motor up from that side to uh, get to that thermostat. So not super hard repairs, but there are a lot of stuff that have to happen just to get in to do those repairs. So because of that, I'm just uh, taking my time on this. I want to get it right. I want to get everything, you know, running back as it should, because like I said, we're going to be putting like 15,000 more miles on this car, which means that I need it to stay running. So it's very important that uh, these issues get addressed with the car. It's just part of regular maintenance, keeping up on the car, and uh, some of that deferred maintenance that the previous owners did not do, which unfortunately always, always catches up to you in the end. So on your own personal vehicle, try to catch these issues before they become major issues. Luckily, I did catch some of these things like those valve covers leaking could um, turn into a major issue down the line with a lot of oil running down the motor, it could short out an alternator, it could get into the cylinders and really cause bad misfires. Or um, It's just better to catch these things while I had it here in the shop already, you know, partly torn apart with the hood off. So it looks really bad, but really I'm just doing simple maintenance to this car along with a uh, semi-simple repair and hopefully we'll have her back out on the road in just a little while. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, if you want me to get my Nissan Murano back out of the shop, smash that thumbs up button. Hit the big red button down below so that you don't miss out on any of the content that I have coming up with this car or any of my other vehicles. Follow me on the Insta thing, link down below. Get out and enjoy your automotive ownership and I'll catch you in the next video.